welcome everyone, it's Matt Smith, thank you so much for joining me today on this video. So recently I've been doing a lot of videos on tank overviews and basically the overlaying systems and designs of different tanks that are coming out nowadays, and I stumbled across a really interesting bit of footage in regards to a older tank that is potentially being given kind of an overhaul, sort of an update in regards to dropping it out of a bloody airplane. And that is fantastic in my eyes, it's something that uh, obviously has happened a lot in the past in World War II, we decided we'd start chucking things out of planes because we're crazy humans and that's what we like to do um, but in the grand scheme of things it's kind of making sense to start coming back to this old type genre of getting equipment onto the battlefield as quickly as possible as we all know the current environment in terms of modern warfare is uh, maneuverability and making sure we can get troops on the ground as quickly as possible as you can see by the footage we're looking at right now we're dropping out some beautiful Humvees out the back of a plane now this kind of setup is really really useful obviously infantry is easily able to be dropped out of a plane and able to take a lot of ground very very quickly yes we can say that uh, parachutists and all that good stuff are perfect targets for air to air or air to sorry ground to air defenses and such can be shot out the sky look we're not saying that parachutists and parachuting vehicles are the number one key way to get troops troops on the ground. We're not going to send troops in the ground like the Second World War with anti-aircraft guns pointing into the sky waiting to shoot us out the sky. What I am trying to say is in a secure LZ like we're looking at right now, probably say 10-15 kilometers away from an enemy uh, I guess line of, of advance, um, it's really really handy to be able to drop equipment on short notice quickly onto the battleground. Uh, infantry, as I said before, can easily be dropped kind of everywhere, but vehicles, it has its own technicalities. Vehicles being inherently very heavy uh, are going to cause a lot of difficulties for parachutes to be able to deploy and get the vehicles onto the ground safely. Uh, we have seen from experience from the British Army, for sure, uh, in my personal background, the uh, light gun that we used to have, or still have actually, still operating, uh, can actually be thrown out the back of a plane, but we started to find, especially in the Falkland Islands, even when dropping them on helicopters, that certain systems were getting damaged, broken, uh, the strut arms were cracking and such, because the, the systems just weren't really designed fully to be able to be dropped from planes. Now, what I'm talking about today is very specific to tanks, and as you already know, I absolutely love tanks. And when I found this article, or this uh, particular topic, I was really intrigued, and I'm kind of curious as to where it's going to go into the future. Now, basically, what this video is going to describe a little bit about is the new design features that they brought into this older tank, and how they're going to update it and upgrade it to potentially bring it into the 21st century, and allow us to deploy tanks onto the battlefield. Now, it's not this isn't really, I guess, a main battle tank as such. I would more scout it as more along the lines of a medium tank, or maybe even a light roll tank, because you're not going to be able to chuck Abrams out the back of a plane. You're going to have to put a parachute shoot the size of the moon on top of it, it's just not going to happen. Um, but it's something the US military I'm sure is intrigued into trying to get going because they want to try and get people into the battlefield as quickly as possible and at short notice. And at the moment, unfortunately, as a NATO force, we're not doing too great at doing that. So have a look at this footage guys and let me see what you think about it. Well, what we're talking about here is more what's uh, a requirement that's emerging called mobile protective firepower. Uh, essentially a very similar requirement to have a deployable platform that can, that's expeditionary in nature, that can be uh, quickly used to get uh, forcible entry into a, uh, a domain that's controlled by the enemy. So basically guys, BA Systems has designed a new kind of system for an older tank to be able to deploy it onto the battleground very, very quickly. Um, and this is fantastic news for a number of reasons. First of all, it's bringing the light tank back into the spotlight. It's an older tank being brought back into the development program, which is really cool to see. I always like to see some older vehicles try and come back into the spotlight and bring them out of the mothballing factories and wherever else they've been left behind into rot. Um, so it's really cool to see. And BA Systems has been doing a, quite a bit of this lately in regards to different design ideas and prototypes they've been making, looking into trying to upgrade old technology, which, you know, again, as I've mentioned in many of my previous videos in regards to upgrades, companies and businesses and countries around the world want to be able to cut the pennies as much as possible and keep those purse strings nice and tight. This is an option which allows them to not have to design a brand new tank or a brand new vehicle. They can basically just take an old design, fix it up a little bit and go from there. The, the need for having this kind of capability really has existed since World War II when you were basically putting people down and the, the most capability they had was their boots and a rifle clearly outmatch when you're behind enemy lines. So the intent of this was to provide more firepower. There were systems along the way that attempted to do that. Nothing 
actually met the full set of requirements until a more rigorous program and a requirement set was was created in the 90s, early 90s. So basically guys, what he's saying is in World War II, we didn't really have the best design principles of actually getting heavy vehicles onto the ground. Technology really wasn't on our side either back then, and all was time. We needed to be able to develop weapons quickly and effectively to try our best to get them to the troops on the ground. And in World War II, technology wasn't exactly the utmost highest level of uh, capability in those days. And uh, like I said, we just were very time constrained. We need to get uh, troops into Normandy and such as quickly as possible, and they needed to design things as quickly as they could. With that being said, unfortunately, the programs never seemed to work out fully, and as he said, the operational requirements weren't completely met. But as he said, in the 90s, they developed new systems to allow us to actually try and deploy light vehicles, scout vehicles, and light tanks onto the battlefield. Everybody knows the Sheridan uh, vehicle. It's a fantastic little tank. Uh, some may not classify it as a tank, but I will classify it as a tank, because really it's got a, quite a powerful main gun on it. Um, it's got tracks, it's got a turret that travels 360, and it uh, doesn't really carry infantry, so I would classify it as a very light tank. Uh, and it was able to be deployed from an aircraft. Uh, normally a C-130 Hercules uh, drops out the back, slides across the floor, and could also be deployed by a parachute. Very, very cool bit of kit. Um, and obviously, this is the kind of thing that they're trying to side on towards nowadays in developing and expanding it even further. So this is why it's really interesting stuff. And this vehicle was a genesis of that. It was, again, an air deployable, a C-130 deployable platform that would be released, or they call it LVAD, low velocity uh, airdrop. And uh, it parachutes down into the, the landing zone. And within 15 minutes, you cut off the chutes, jump in the vehicle, the paratroopers jump in separately, jump in the vehicle, you're off and running with a 105 cannon which fires about 12 rounds a minute. Now as impressive as this may be, it's also highlighting a few concerns for me personally. Uh, first of all, this vehicle is beefy, okay, it's got a 105mm gun, that's a lot of weight. Um, you've got to think about the ammunition that's going to be stored inside this vehicle. It may not be stored inside, it may come in ammunition racks later on after the first parachute, but it does bring to light that this vehicle is adding its weight substantially to what it was originally designed for um, in regards to probably up armoring. I mean, they're not going to deploy a tank onto the battlefield with no armor, explosive reactive armor and such on the vehicle, which is going to increase its weight. It kind of defeats the purpose to being able to deploy a vehicle like this when it hits the ground, having to get a truck to start slapping armor on the side of it, such as bar armor and all that sort of stuff. Uh, especially when it's working with infantry coming from an airborne unit, it's probably going to be deployed alongside infantry as a support role. So potential closing engagements, RPG attack, bar armor may be utilized, explosive reactive armor, we're increasing the weight and the chances and likelihood of this vehicle landing fully operational less and less. Um, it's hard to see with the technicalities of this actual program they're putting into place whether or not it would have problems with all this extra weight they're going to put on. Um, I mean parachutes can only do so much and you've got to remember the technical you know, landing of this vehicle isn't very easy for pilots, I'm sure, for the C-130 to do. It's not exactly an easy maneuver trying to, you know, drop one of these things off at altitude or low altitude and at speed. Um, and I just think there's a lot of risk there for these vehicles to get pretty much demolished. Um, but still, that's a lot of firepower. 105mm gun is very impressive, so I'm kind of curious as to where they're going with everything else on this vehicle. have about 30, 30 rounds in the vehicle, so you can do a quite, quite a lot of uh, damage with that capability. Well, some of the technologies that we have put on there is, for example, you see the, uh, the band track. That's now, I've always been quite skeptical of the rubber band tracks for armored fighting vehicles. I've never really done much research. I should really start doing some. Um, but it, in this particular application, it makes absolute perfect sense. If we can get a light vehicle onto the battleground with a vehicle that can actually utilize its track still operationally fine and reduce a hell of a lot of weight, then obviously they're going to put the rubber band tracks on there. And I honestly think that this potentially is going to be the way of the future for most tanks nowadays with these rubberized tracks. I don't know how much poor you know, effort they've put into researching whether or not this vehicle is going to handle these kind of tracks very well, because they're not really fully designed to have rubber tracks, they were designed to have metal tracks. So it will be interesting to see how they perform actually on the battlefield with these particular kind of tracks. But it's a no-brainer, you know, if they can reduce weight then why not? And the track is obviously a huge weight reduction on this vehicle to drop out of a plane. 
an, an option that we're considering. You can get you know several hundreds and hundreds of pounds off of the system, up to 800 pounds, by going to a band track. Much lighter, in many ways, much more reliable than having multiple steel links along the way. Trigger warning, guys. You guys may not like what I'm about to say here, but I completely disagree with what he just said in terms of reliability to metal tracks to rubberized tracks. Look, buddy, I've worked with metallic tracks most of my military career, and the reliability of them is second to none. Unless you are not maintaining your vehicle and your track maintenance, those tracks will keep running forever and ever and ever. They will keep going until they're nearly bare metal at the very core of the track and still keep going. Okay, I honestly don't feel that something that's as soft as rubber is going to overtake the fact that pure steel running along the track is going to be a lot less reliable. It just makes no sense to me. Now, as I said, trigger warning because I know it's going to set so many people off in saying so, but I honestly think that in this particular application it makes complete sense, but rubberized tracks in the future We've really got to take it with a pinch of salt and be careful where you're going with this. Okay, there's a lot of complications and technicalities with using rubberized tracks. And in fact, I might do a video on it in the near future here. But I will always side towards steel track before rubberized for now. I don't know enough about rubberized tracks, but what he just said there, I will completely disagree with. Because really, he probably has never really operated with metallic track, used it, uh, driven with them. I mean, utilizing rubber bands in heat could potentially cause stretch. And there's only so much an idler can take on to tension before it has to be changed whereas at least with metallic track you can chop out a few links it's really not too difficult and you could probably do the same with rubberized tracks you could maybe chop out some sections and reconnect it i don't know how that works like i said more research to be done but in terms of reliability buddy yeah metallic tracks is still going to be the way forward personally for me for quite some time uh, so that's one of the things that we're assessing. We're looking at a lot of other enhancements like going to a higher horsepower engine that's much lighter. Uh, engine technology has really gone a long way since 1990. And uh, as we're doing our market surveys, we see a lot of engines that show a lot of promise. But the, reason, the real reason we brought this vehicle here today is to show that there is something real that can meet that requirement and have a conversation. I'm sorry, I had to pause the video there. It literally looked like they just threw a firecracker at the front of the armor of that vehicle. It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know if that was an RPG, but it did not look like it would penetrate shit. With the Army leadership and, and get a better understanding of, as they see the threat environment changing, uh, what kind of modifications... Uh oh trigger warning. Looks like this vehicle has an autoloader on it. That's very, very interesting. And if you guys haven't checked out my previous video on autoloaders versus manual loaders, please feel free to check it out. The comment section is exploding right now in regards to water loaders and manual loaders controversy which is completely fine I totally get it but it looks like this vehicle potentially is gonna have one too and I've got to admit with the auto loads it does look badass watching brass pop out the back of it like that it just looks amazing really doesn't it and I really believe a lot of them will be relatively minor would you make to a platform such as this to, uh, to, to make it something we'd want to launch into production with. That right now, there's been an RFI release really to do an industry survey. Uh, after that, there would be you know the formal RFP proposal process, but really, because we can take advantage of the investment, a couple hundred million dollars that was initially put into the AGS program, it makes a natural springboard to move into a, uh, a follow-on uh, production. Now, this vehicle isn't ready for production today, what what would make sense is to uh, initiate a quick prototype phase so within 18 to 24 months built up a couple of prototypes that go through a couple of years of government testing based on that we would be able to go into a low rate production so within a five-year period you're still talking a very rapid acquisition now considering that is going to be a massive trials and development program here guys i mean they're not going to just start throwing tanks out the back of planes straight away it's going to take a lot of trialing and development to get this kind of idea pushed forward uh, whether or not congress and the united states military continue pushing on with it would be really really interesting to find out and i'm going to do some research in the background see if i can maybe put it in the description below but he said five years is quite rapid honestly in my personal opinion i don't find that to be rapid at all um it's all dependent on budget i guess whether or not this project would get a lot of funding to do something like this would be very subjective to whether or not the decision would be made to go for it but uh five years really isn't that uh, that quick of a deadline considering that you could probably design a new vehicle in that time to be honest and go from scratch developing and trialing it 
compared to most vehicle programs, but that's because you take a mature technology, non-developmental item, and move that forward. So there you go guys, looks like the United States military is looking into getting some tanks thrown out the back of planes once again. And as you can see in this footage right now, the Russians have been doing it for quite some time and continually developing their airborne drop systems. Now Russia are very very keen on their airborne uh, deployment of troops and we already know this. Uh, it's been depicted in many video games in the past, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I think they depicted an entire brigade of troops being dropped in on the ground. But look, as you can see here, they're dropping in some APCs, looks like some, I think, BMPs potentially, they're being dropped in here. Hell of a lot of parachutes there. Uh, and they're pretty much off they go, they're ready to go and deploying their troops straight away, and it's, that's kind of a smart move, you know, in today's modern uh, conflict environment. It's just a, a smart way to go. So I'm kind of curious as how the US is going to move from here, um, and I'm going to stay in, in touch with it, stay tuned with it, do some research and see what I can find out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today. I want to hear your comments and opinions on this though. Please leave it in the comment section below. Give me your input. What do you think? Do you think this is something that the US military and other countries should develop more into? Or it's just a kind of fad that we're just kind of researching for no reason? Let me know what you think. I hope you have a great day. Thank you again for watching. Slack that like and subscribe button and all the best.